Hello, Jeff Zwerink again here with Give and Take, the segment of our show where we look at important scientific topics and how they equip you to be better prepared to share the gospel. Today I'm joined by President and Founder of Reasons to Believe, Dr. Hugh Ross, and we're going to ask the question, will humans ever travel in space? Hugh, it's good to have you here again today. Thank you. So this is, obviously, we've traveled out into space, we've gone to the moon, we've put people orbiting the Earth. But, you know, we're here, we're talking about Star Wars, Star Trek, going off to distant planets, distant galaxies, those sorts of things. What are some of the problems that arise with that? And do you think we're ever actually going to be able to travel in space like well, that? Well, as a research paper just got published making the point that we're okay, we're talking really short distances. Short distances being? Like to the moon and back. To the moon and back, okay. Uh, but going to Mars, which is like the next jump up, they said they're basically concluding that's out of the question because you get outside the Earth's magnetosphere. And so they did experiments in the lab with mice and rats, and they chose mice and rats because their digestive tract is very similar to the digestive tract of humans. Mm -hmm. And what they discovered is that when they exposed these mice and rats to the kind of cosmic ray bath that they would get if they were outside the Earth's magnetosphere, does incredible damage uh, to their digestive tract. Okay, so, so let's come back to that. Just kind of step back to help people understand here. So Earth has a magnetic field around it. So uh, that as charged particles, cosmic rays come in, those things don't make it down to the surface of the Earth, correct? Correct. What happens to them? Well, it, you basically you've got kind of a cone-like funnel around the Earth okay. that acts as like a magnetic shield. And so it prevents the really deadly cosmic rays from impacting creatures on the surface of the Earth. Okay, so it shields inside the planet and presumably you're you know, inside even that, up into the space station. I thought we've got pretty good shielding from it. Yeah, correct? the space station is 100% protected by okay. Earth's magnetosphere, so no problem going to the space station. Uh, the moon, often the moon is inside our magnetosphere. Okay. And if you're outside, you're only outside for a day or two. And okay. Basically, that's what the experiment said that they did on the mice and rats is that if we're talking a few days, not a problem. Once you get past a month, and particularly when you get past three months, uh, the impact is debilitating. In other words, mm -hmm. an astronaut in a spaceship that spends three months outside of our magnetosphere would have his digestive tract or her digestive tract so utterly destroyed that they would cease to be able to function. Right. And if you leave them much longer, they die. Okay. So, so let's kind of, I want to explore what the details of some of how that plays out or what's going on there. But so are they actually sending mice out into space no, no, or no, where, no. how are they doing this? I it's guess all done like, in the lab. Okay. But since we know what the so, radiation and. Yeah. Where, so where do they get their cosmic, where do they get the radiation? I guess that's the question. Yeah. Since we know what the radiation environment is like outside the magnetosphere, mm -hmm. In the lab, they expose these mice to exactly the radiation environment you would you'd be exposed to outside the magnetosphere. And basically what you're looking at is uh, you get a lot of these heavy nuclei, fast-moving cosmic rays. So heavy nuclei being stuff that's not hydrogen, helium, it's like heavier elements. Carbon, oxygen, iron, right, okay. those kinds of things. 99% of the cosmic rays are electrons and protons. 1% uh, are the helium nuclei. We're talking about the stuff that's heavier than helium. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's and this stuff just pervades the galaxy. I mean, it's it not, not a rare or unusual that we're in the cosmic radiation. It's just that Earth's magnetosphere shields us from it here on the surface. It shields us from it, but the heart of the experiment was, let's see what happens to these mice when we expose them to what an astronaut would experience outside the Earth's magnetosphere. So, so if we can dig into that, I mean, what sorts of problems do they have? Obviously, if you've got, you know, you're looking at the interior of the stomachs, is correct? Right. What sort of damage happened there that's causing the problems? Well, they were able to as, um, publish in detail the kind of uh, mm -hmm. gut-wrenching effects you experience. Uh, probably the biggest thing is that you disturb the movement of certain critical cells that go up and down the intestinal tract. Okay. And when you disturb that movement, it opens up your uh, digestive uh, tissues to pathogenic invasion. And so, so are these just kind of like sweeper cells, if you will, that kind of clean things off? They do. They, okay. they protect you from the pathogenic uh, microbes that are inside your gut. Okay. And so when that is disrupted, uh, suddenly these pathogens can uh, penetrate the intestinal wall, and that begins to have an impact on the rest of the body. And then uh, also... Uh, the, the movement of these cells protects you against tumor development. So that's what mm -hmm. they notice 
is that even in a space of a few months, tumors were growing. Mm. And moreover, what they noticed is they would do the experiment for three months, then take the mouse outside of that environment. But what they noticed is the impact lasted another year. In other words, the consequences uh, would continue for a full year after a three-month exposure. So even That's if you just, remarkable. Yeah. So even if you were out there for three months, you're going to have another year of significant consequences. You know, what I find interesting about that is that even if, uh, you know, if we're talking about anything outside our solar system, that the closest star, even traveling at a tenth the speed of light, would take us 40 years to get there, the types of damage you're going to have, not only are you going to have the damage there, but even if once you get there and get out of the radiation environment, you're going to have those consequences for a long time after that is what it sounds like. That's exactly what it's sounding like. And like the fastest trip we can make to Mars is six months if you pick the right window of time to go. Okay. But what this paper is saying is even in a six-month trip, uh, you're probably looking at astronauts that are going to be experiencing such gut-wrenching consequences. Mm -hmm. They will not be able to function and they might even be dead by the time uh, they get to Mars. Bottom line is it's a great paper telling us we're far better off sending machines to Mars <laughs> than trying to send people. We already know it's way cheaper, but this paper is basically saying it's simply not possible right. to send a human being uh, to Mars where they can do anything. Let me take a step back. If you could just take a few seconds and elaborate on a point you, you stated f fairly briefly is that we're looking at mice, but you said that mice are a pretty good analog or a way to study what's going on with the human digestive tract. Obviously, we can't do these sorts of experiments on humans. But why is, what about mice makes it so amenable to study how humans are going to respond? Well, notice that mice and rats are omnivores, just like we are. Mm -hmm. And so their digestive tract is designed so that they can survive on a vegan diet or a meat diet or a combination. Mm -hmm. Well, we're the same. And it's remarkable how similar the digestive tract of mice and rats are to human beings, which is why they're a favorite animal for using for medical research. Mm -hmm. And I think it's part of the uh, creator's uh, blessing to us. He designed these animals in such a way that they have such a close analog to a human body, we can use them for medical research rather than human beings. Well, thanks, Hugh. I appreciate your comments. You know, we talk about wanting to space travel, and that just pervades our culture. But when we investigate how difficult it is to actually carry out that space travel, one of the interesting consequences is we see just how remarkably well-designed Earth is to shield us from all the perils of space travel. You know, I would encourage you to go check out Hugh's blog on this topic. Go to reasons.org and search for, Is Gut-Wrenching Space Travel Possible? And you will be better equipped to share the remarkable design features of Earth to tell others about the Creator.